All right, uh, let's see here. I hope this all works. <clears throat> and, um, you know, so I thought I'd do a, a special live stream. This, I couldn't really plan a time with this because it's like there's a lot of things going on today. First of all, we got snowed on yesterday, and it was kind of interesting that um, we got, like, some heavy slush. It's just been... I don't know, but I hope I hope the sound and vision is good. Um, this is actually just strictly my phone, okay? And um, this is a portable setup I'm testing. So welcome to a Monday special edition of Live with Rhea. I wish I could do yesterday, but with all the bad weather, and I was just simply tired because I, I actually was um, doing some uh, some work in the house and kind of, you know, I just got really tired. Hello, um, Kirtan KS. Hello, VU2FGH. Hello to the other people. I'll give you guys some time to get in. But, um, yeah, you know, tonight we're going to talk about uh, some things. <laughs> some, I, 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 I don't know. I have a mixed view on this, really. I, I really think that it's a necessary topic to talk to. I don't like to dedicate a lot of time to it because it just, um, you know, mm, it, I don't know, I think, but I think it's important for you to know, and um, it's really uh, kind of uh, interesting things here. Hi, Carlisle, and hi, KC1 NUW, greetings from Connecticut. You know, I'm going to be there tomorrow evening, so, and um, yeah, you know, Gray, the weather kind of, um, it's kind of interesting, because the weather here in New Jersey, we had... Um, kind of a sharp cut off for the snow and, and ice and such. So I got snow and ice. I didn't really get that much ice. I got snow and it came down kind of, you know, nice and powdery. And then this rain fell and kind of turned it into slushy mush. And um, we had to, to plow that, you know, and it was kind of just really terrible. You know, one day I'll pay a service to do it. I'm just kind of tired. Um, in thought of Fiji and Tonga, I really, I'm, um, you know, part of the problem with Tonga is that I haven't really seen a lot of radio amateurs there, so to speak. And like most of them are, that are there are, um, that operate there are like de-expeditioners, right? You know, you go there and you have some foreign operator operate as a de-expedition. I, I think they have local hams. I don't know if they have um, uh, HF capability. Um, that would be nice. They could talk out the country because that volcano kind of burned up their fiber optic cable. So, you know, it's really interesting. You know, I have experience in Trinidad and Tobago where we have hurricanes, not so much in Trinidad, but up the Caribbean and other Caribbean countries like Grenada, well, not so much Grenada either, but like Jamaica, oh boy, Jamaica is, they get hit hard. They got hit in the 1980s, I believe, with Hurricane Gilbert and Hugo, and then you have really poor countries like Haiti. So what happened, they they kind of just, they have, their communications gets knocked down, and Today, yeah, people, you know, will say, yeah, we have the internet, we have all these undersea fiber optic cables and such, but those kind of, well, as we can see with this, those are vulnerable too. I mean, there's the, there's a whole thing about, one, the, um, the volcano, but two, if somebody drops an anchor, you know, and then drags it along, you know, I think these cables are heavily armored though, but it's just like that, so... Hi, Liberty Cave, NU3Q. Nice to see you. Yeah, I've been involved in Skyborne at, at some time or the other. Um, and Covain, thank you very much. Nice to see you guys here. So, all right. Yeah, they're, the cable's cut. Yeah, it's, it's just terrible around. So anyway, um, tonight we're going to talk a little bit about, so why I chose this topic. I mean, it's been a viewer, it's a viewer request, okay? Somebody... Ask, say, hey, you know, why don't you talk about what you do at the league? 
okay, I'm, I'm going to talk about it. I really don't like doing the, the politics so much, but I feel it's necessary sometimes. What, um, what I am doing is this week I'm going up for the, the board of directors meeting at ARRL, and we are going to um, <laughs> the Occupy Marsh, right? Yeah, so that's... I'll explain that in a minute. So anyway, I'm going up to the league this week, and I, I thought I'll explain a little bit about what we do. So the Occupy Mars shirt is for my son, okay? So in school, they have this project called the Wax Museum, right? A virtual Wax Museum. And then what they do is their teacher gives them a historical, historical character, okay? Like, for example, um, one of the girls got... Um, Florence Nightingale, and the other one got um, um, Kalpana Chawla, okay? And Kalpana Chawla, as you know, well, Florence Nightingale, of course, was a nurse who basically supposedly revolutionized nursing and made it patient-centric, and you know, um, and she was dealing with a lot of veterans, too, which is good because, you know, during wartime, the hospitals get, get um, loaded up. But uh, Kalpana Chawla was the first, I believe she was the first Indian woman to go into space. Like Indian, Indian, you know, from India. My heritage is Indian, although I've never been to India. It's kind of funny when I walk into an Indian restaurant, they try to talk to me in Hindi. And then I can't, um, you know, uh, let's see here. Somebody's trying to message me over and over. So... Mm. Yeah, I just had to say yes. So, anyway, yeah, so the Mars shirt, right, is um, my son has to play Elon Musk, okay, like a display in a wax museum, and he has to talk about Elon Musk. So, Elon's always wearing this Occupy Mars shirt, and we figured it would be a perfect costume for him, you know, and then he has his bandana because they have to wear masks anyway. He'll wear a real mask, but he'll have the bandana over it because Elon Musk don't like to wear masks. So anyway, all right, so what do I do? Okay, so let me explain a little bit about things. Um, I'm going to try to talk and tell you guys. Um, I don't know how much I could show you because this is a phone. I'll try to show you some stuff, but I'll explain a lot of things, you know, about what we do and, and my whole philosophy and, and journey and such like that in, in this thing. This is my 25, 25th year of amateur radio. And it's been a very, very eventful one. I've been, uh, I've literally done a lot of things in amateur radio. You know, I've, I started off basically on two meter repeaters. I did a, um, HF, I did WinLink. Uh, one of my friends was a WinLink mailbox operator, and um, I've done, um, and I used to help him maintain the station, and um, I've done contesting, DXing, public service, I've done, you know, you name it, right? So, oh, well, I haven't really stepped into, I did VHF, UHF microwave. I want to get into Arden and, and such like that, too where they do data networks. So a few years ago, there was um, the funny story of, of how I got involved with the league. But first, let me go back further than that. When I first came to the United States, I got my first taste of what it was like dealing with the league. And I wasn't, I will be frank, I wasn't happy about it, okay? I was a new immigrant. I wasn't issued a social security number, right? I was legal, but... SSA didn't issue SSN yet. And I went to take an exam, and the exam session told me, no, you need a social security number. And I knew this was not true because their own manual was going to say it. I emailed the president of the AWRL at that time, and he was very unhelpful, and I was very upset that they couldn't help me. So that kind of, the free number the first impressions last. I still did join AWRL and decided to give them a chance. And, um, yeah, and this wasn't AWRL staff, by the way. So this was a uh, was the, the president who was from the board of directors. 
That said, I respect everything the staff do at AWRL. I will never speak ill about them. They have, a lot of them have tough jobs to do. Um, you know, if I see a problem that needs addressing, I will bring it to the attention of the CEO and I'll explain how that relationship works and he will take care of it because that's his job. That's what we hired him to do. Okay, so um, first thing is, so beyond that, you know, I got involved with Aries and I did some time as a, as um, in the formal MCOM infrastructure. I've done some time with um, RACES, you know, which is not an arm of AWRL. I've done a fair amount of things. And then um, I've also done, um, in, you know, I got involved with club leadership. Right, so I was a secretary of the NJDXA North Jersey DX Association, which is one of my radio clubs that I like to that I, I like, um, you know, I like them because they're involved with DXing. And I found DXing very fascinating because I learned a lot, um, you know. Uh, oh, let me tell this person, uh, yeah, give me a minute. Um, Live streaming, okay. <laughs> Some people will not leave me alone. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, where was I? So, you know, because I did everything now, and then um, NJDXC, I got involved in club leadership. I was a club president of another club at one time. And I, you know, I got a taste for what it's like to deal with the ham radio world of, um, maybe not. Well, in 20... 18 there was this whole thing about there was this whole controversy about dick norton who is a director from the southwestern division of the awrl he actually um he got censured by the board and the board um you know the members a lot of members were not happy about it frankly i will say sitting in some board meetings with him um, Dick is quite a character. He, he's very, very, he has a lot of very interesting views about amateur radio. Um, a lot of them I disagree with. A lot of them I agree with. But I will never, ever, ever take away his right to speak about what he does in the league and his positions on issues. Because I believe that we are all basically accountable to the members and to amateur radio, the general, you know, everybody in amateur radio. That said, there are certain things that we, we won't discuss. Like we won't talk about private employee issues, you know, HR matters pending legal, like legal meaning um, that, you know, lawsuits and stuff because every everybody gets sued in America, okay? Um, I sued some people I'm still suing people, <laughs> you know, we have legal things. I can't say who exactly, but, you know, everybody's involved with the legal system at some point or the other, okay? And it's not unusual at all, but, you know, sometimes that's the only way to get things resolved, and you need to get things resolved. So those are, you know, those are things that we talk about. But you know what, regarding policy, yeah, I will talk about policy, you know, I will talk about um, I'll talk about what we do, and and such like that. I will tell you what I'm not. I'm not a section manager, although I appreciate all the work that the section managers do. I am a division director, and I'll explain. Um, so let me explain how the history of the division directors. So back in the young AWRL, right, like the really old um, Hiram Percy Maxim, when it was an actual radio relay league, okay. So I don't know if you know this, but the name American Radio Relay League has a very specific meaning. Back in the early days of the AWRL, back in the early days of radio, after the government basically forced licensing on us, okay? The government said, you know, we are going to put you guys in the useless frequencies of 200 meters and down. Go away, hobbyists. We don't we don't need you anymore. You know, 
let the commercial, the big ships and such like that, let them have the choice frequencies, the long waves that, you know, they could pass maritime traffic, just like that. And then um, what happened is that Maxim and company now essentially were limited to, you know, radio amateurs were limited to like 20, 25 miles. And they didn't have good equipment, a lot of them. And, you know, they don't, they obviously don't have a flex radio or an ICOM 7610 or an FTDX 1000 or one of these expensive fancy radios that cost six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000. No, they had one or two tube sets. They had a regenerative receiver, which was fancy stuff, you know, and um, so I said that. So long story short, he, did, he started this radio relay league. And later on, Hiram, um, the organization began to grow bigger. So what he did, did was he divided it up into divisions, which are big geographical sections of the country. And they usually encompass several states. Then some areas began to, like, they began to carve them out even further. Like, for example, um, northern and southern California, they got split up in two because California is so populous. My division is the Hudson Division, which is basically the New York City metro area going up all the way to Lake George and um, in eastern New York, going all the way out to Montauk Point on New York City and Long Island, and all the way South Jersey down to um, Monmouth County, okay? And um, Ocean County is um, South Jersey. So, yeah, eventually they did a, um, hi, okay, eventually they did a thing where they had their own board of directors and they began to get formal and then, you know, the AWRL historically has had to deal with spectrum threats, right? We have spectrum threats today where we're losing little pieces of band or, you know, somebody wants it to, to set up shop and, and, um, do things within our frequency allocations and um, we have to fight that back okay I mean we're not gonna always win but you know we still have to fight back we actually almost completely lost a WRL it's because Hiram Percy Maxim went and told all these radio amateurs hey write letters to Congress okay and tell Congress don't take away ham radio don't take away our frequencies this was after World War one, I believe it was, when the Navy basically ordered all radio amateurs off the air. And then afterwards it sought to control radio as a military resource rather than letting these pesky hobbyists have um, radio spectrum to, to use recreationally. And I'm sure I'm going to see a, a thing that says demonetize because you talk about use recreationally. <laughs> they probably mean something else. All right, so, um, yeah, I'll get to the chain of command in a minute, okay? So, um, right, so that is the board of directors, and that's where I serve, okay? And um, how I got involved was, um, was in 2018, you know, with the censure of Dick Norton, and um, my predecessor and I had a little confrontation at, um, um, at my clubs at the NJDXA, holiday luncheon and um, you know I asked him about the censure of Dick Norton and then he said well you know Dick is a very um, we had disagreement and you know um, basically I didn't find his, his explanation very adequate and I asked him I said so when is your election who's up who's running against you because I want to support them and then he pointed to me and said are you going to run against me? And then I thought about it. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I will. And then that's how it happened. So the margin was very narrow, but I worked very hard to get to basically, you know, to campaign. I visited every radio club I could find. Okay. I looked up all the radio clubs. I contacted people. I pounded the pavement. Right. And then I basically... I did a mailing, a postal mailing, and this postal mailing was very painful, okay? I literally printed, I have machines to do that kind of stuff, mass mailing. And then um, 
I, you know, I dropped it all in these blue collection boxes. Oh, man. I endured tons of personal attacks. I endured a lot of rough campaigning. It was rough. I, could, I couldn't believe that, you know, that, um, that people would try to, you know, try to knock me down. But anyway, so that's over. 2019, I, you know, January 2019... I actually get into the director orientation. I, w I go up to Newington, Connecticut. And, um, you know, um, I had the director orientation. I got a little red badge that says director Hudson Vision. And um, I get to meet all the AWRL staff. And at that time, we had CEO Howard Mickle. And I met him. Of course, I met him at, um, at Ham Radio University. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't really like the politics. It's just, the, you know, it's necessary sometimes. And um, but anyway, I went to Newington, Connecticut, and then for the for my first board meeting. And then I just, you know, I, I like I met everybody. And then, you know, I actually began to get the lay of the land. Okay. So how this works. So every year they have two board meetings, right? We have one in January and one in July. And the one in July, basically, the one in January is titled the annual board meeting. This is the big one where they, they, the board elects a president every couple of years, right? Who is currently Rick Roderick, K5UR. And also the officers, the first and second vice presidents, who, um, you know, they, they have various functions, like they mostly sit on committees. And then um, every few years or so, we also elect members to the ARL Foundation Board. I'm on the ARL Foundation Board. And we welcome new members in January. We give them a nice little pin, an ODV pin, with some, I guess, fake jewels on it. Or it might be real jewels, I don't know. But it's like a little diamond pin. And um, we get we get um, our stuff there. So the meeting um, commences. We have opening courtesies and stuff. A lot of structure is very very formal. Okay, I was surprised basically at how formal this was. You know, we present motions on the floor. And by the way, this happens all in Hartford, um, not Hartford, in Windsor, Connecticut, right? We don't have it at AWRL headquarters because AWRL headquarters is too small to hold the 15 directors, 15 vice directors, the officers, and um, you might have a couple of visitors too. We invite Radio Amateurs of Canada, the president. We invite the IARU, um, either the president, well, they send a, a representative, and then, um, you know, they we... We, we have pro director people who were on the board before can attend at their own expense, can attend the board meetings at their own expense. So you know, somebody was previously a director and they decide they want to come up and watch the proceedings for a day, sure, they can come up, you know. They just have to notify the, um, the secretary in advance. And every, uh, every year, yeah, we elect... Uh, a CEO, basically. Um, I believe, um, you know, and, you know, usually it's no controversy except for last one. Hey, K5YVY. Nice to see you here. Yeah. And um, so, yes, yeah, so everything is, is pretty formal. I was surprised. You know, we have, like, we presented with reports. We have a lot of committee reports and such like that. We have... Um, you know, things like uh, Logbook of the World Committee. We have Electromagnetic Compatibility Committee. We have ARIS. We have um, the, um, um, well, we have the big committees, the Programming Services and Administration of Finance. We have this, the CEO report. We have the CFO report. We have a lot of, um, you know, we have a lot of different reports. and But also we get, copies of this they used to give us and by request you can still get one 
We used to get a big thick binder with all these reports and motions and such like that. Now we do it electronically, thank God, because I really hate killing trees like that, okay? Um, and not only, it's not only about the trees, it's the fact that I have to lug this big thing home. Whereas if you give me electronic files, I just keep that, you know, with me and I'm good to go, you know? And, um, yeah, so you have that, you have, um, once you, you know, you accept all reports and the reports are usually not, we don't go over each report in detail, right? What we have is we have a, a, a motion to accept all the reports, right? And then we, um, we just basically any report that people want to see and talk about in detail, you know, they might see something that catches their eye they could ask for it to be pulled out for a separate discussion, okay? And that's usually, you know, there are usually a few reports that, that are, you know, things that discuss like, you know, pertinent issues or something that somebody, some director might have that. So, um, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, life membership, you have, you, you basically have to just pay, you know, I think it's twelve twenty five now. Yeah, it is, it is pretty much Robert's Rules of Order, okay? Yes, exa it's, it's exactly Robert's Rules of Order, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so once that is done, it usually happens over two days, okay? And then two days, you're done, and then we get to go home and such like that, you know? And, um, yeah, you basically dedicate those two days. Friday and Saturday, okay? It will never go into Sunday unless something big happens. Prior to Friday and Saturday. So I mentioned the standing committees, right? In the AWRL, you have several standing committees. It used to be two standing committees, and now you have three. And you have the executive committee, so that's four. Okay? And um, hey, Joe, nice to see you. Um, and we're going to see you at Orlando, too. So, um, yeah, so the standing committees, there are there's the Programs and Services Committee, which is basically they handle all the member-facing programs, they handle all of the awards and DX and contests and such like that. And, you know, they, um, they basically do that to, to enhance the value for the members. There's, then there's administration of finance, okay? Administration and finance committee deals with the business side of the AWRL. It deals with a lot of um, um, the publishing business, you know, and... Um, the VEC and a lot of things where the AWRL spends money and, um, you know, and does things. IT is under the purview of ANF too, okay? I am on ANF because of the IT stuff, because of my IT expertise, which is what I do for a living. There is a third committee that has been created for emergency communications and field services, okay? That was created in July. So that one is basically their, um, you know, the, that third standing committee deals with all the Aries and stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, Joe is a cat in a hat. Okay. <laughs> That's his whole shtick. All right. Okay. Now, um, there is another committee called the executive committee. And um, the executive committee is basically elected by the directors and the EC handles board business in between the board meetings. So now their, their, real, their, their real purpose was back in the days when, you know, the board members could not get together on Zoom or even on a teleconference bridge, okay? And they had to get together via... Um, they had to take the railroad, you know, uh, and, and take several days to travel to, to Connecticut to have the board meetings or some other place. I think they were, used to be all held in Connecticut, too. And, um, you know, back then, they had to have a, a way of, of basically dealing with emergency things. So they formed this executive committee. Today, I think my personal opinion is that we could definitely do things without an executive committee. Um, we can have some functions that are emergency stuff, like let's say the FCC says tomorrow we're going to take away two meters or something like that, you know? And um, 
you know, all of that is, is, is emergency stuff. But what's discussed in, in the executive committee meetings are generally things like, you know, those emergency things. FCC matters are extensively discussed. And the CEO comes in and talks about the organization, how things are doing, and such like that. The, um, so beyond those committees, you actually have some others that deal with, with various subtopics, right? You, will, you could have like subcommittees of these standing committees. And those subcommittees could actually have people who are outside of the AWRL. Like, for example, you have, um, uh, they used to have one called entry-level licensing, which dealt with this technician license, the new technician privileges. You have the ARIS committee, which deals with ARIS, right? Amateur Radio on the International Space Station. You have, um, you know, that one has a few people on it who are usually involved in, um, you know, like Rosalie, okay? Um, Rosalie... She is, um, you know, she's she's the AWRL delegate for ARIS. And she basically g gives reports and does PR and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you have a historical committee for historic preservation. Um, the vice director in my division, um, Bill Hudzik, W2UDT, is on that. And I've learned a lot from Bill, by the way. Bill's, Bill's been uh, a good... Um, you know, a good resource to learn things. Unfortunately, he's he's not doing so well these days. So, you know, I'm 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 really um I'm really grateful for all his, his help and support. Uh, let's see here. Right, other things we do. Um, we also have um, discussions on a mailing list. You know, we have our internal mailing list and we have communications. You know, it's not like you know, really super secret private stuff because, you know, you don't generally discuss that on an open mailing list, right? But it is it's still confidential to the board of directors. It's just, you know, you're not going to discuss like an HR matter. So an HR matter, you have to basically go into what you call committee of the whole. And committee of the whole is basically only the, the directors and officers and vice directors. And that one basically is... Uh, a committee where you discuss, you know, sensitive matters. So, um, for example, like, let's say, I don't know, let's say, um, let's say we had an, an issue with um, a specific employee, you know, uh, um, and the board typically doesn't deal with low-level HR matters because that's typically handled by the CEO and um, his delegates, right, his, you know, because he has subordinates and stuff who would be doing stuff for him. The, um, you know, we, we would deal with, with higher level things like, you know, like, for example, the CEO himself, okay, we go in the committee of a whole to talk about the CEO and um, things like that. So speaking of the CEO, the CEO is actually elected by the board and serves at the pleasure uh, of the board and, you um, he is actually, you know, he executes the policy that comes out of the AWRL board. He has a lot of leeway to do things, you know, but we basically give him a broad charter of things to do and policy-wise. And then he goes and he does it, you know. He brings things to us for approval. We would approve or disapprove, right? And um, that's generally how it works. Ham Radio Hobo asks, how many women are in leadership position at AWRL? So in terms of the board, I don't know how many section managers. So that's like a completely foreign world to me. I'll probably have a section manager. Maybe I'll have Dan Marler on to talk about a section manager. Dan, if your ears are burning, okay, come on. We'll talk about the field organization one day. But anyway, <laughs> uh, as far as the directors, yeah, there are two women directors, okay? Okay. Um, Myself and Kristen McIntyre. Okay, Kristen is K6WX, and she's in California. And I'm in New Jersey, so we have East and West Coast. I wish it were more, to be honest, because um, sometimes, you know, I think, I think you could definitely use that perspective. I think, um, you know, it's just kind of hard to, to find. Um, and then... Um, well, of course, the CFO is Diane Middleton. She's, you know, obviously there, but she's a she's a staff member. She is an officer, but she's paid staff. Um, which group handles uh, high spammers? 
Let's see, remove user and hide user. Yoink, okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, which, um, which, which, uh, which group handles legal matters? So there, there are a few legal um, things. So FCC matters are handled by our FCC counsel, who is David Siddall, okay? And David Siddall generally works with the executive committee and he works with the entire board to handle FCC matters, right? Things like filing, um, you know, filing FCC petitions and comments and such like that. We have a legal structure committee, right? And some of the, some of the um, members of the board are attorneys, so they know legal practice quite well. So we have a legal structure committee. We have a legislative advocacy committee who works with, you know, people we might hire for lobbying and people we go down to Washington and we talk with our various um, members of Congress, right, um, to achieve our legislative goals. So that one is the, le the Legislative Advocacy Committee. So there are quite a few people. Corporate... Um, Legal matters are handled by a corporate counsel, right? And uh, corporate counsel, um, they, we have a law firm we retain for corporate issues. It used to be that you used to have one lawyer who did both, but we think that, you know, um, it needs to be separate because you really want that specialization with the FCC matters. And David Siddall is actually pretty, pretty good with his whole knowledge of the FCC. He used to be a former, former deputy media bureau chief. Okay, so he used to work at the FCC and, and that's very advantageous for us. Okay, um, yeah, the demographics. So, <laughs> um, I, was, I, I don't want to say this in a, in a way because it's really not, um, it's not the fault of the director is really for this, but I am, I am like the only non-white person on the board. Okay, and um, yeah, and yeah, Kay Craigie was uh, was a uh, was the first woman to be AWRL president. I think I need another one, but anyway. Um, the uh, yeah, the race thing is kind of complicated because I think, in general, amateur radio does have a, an issue with attracting demographics outside of you know, um, white males. The problem with that is that you can't really solve this by putting a quota. Um, how you solve this is that you have people who are, you know, who could basically evangelize this hobby and be, um, you know, ambassadors to various communities. Because like it or not, you know, people kind of like, they, they feel more welcome when they see people like them doing different activities, okay? Like in... Um, my um, my Second Amendment activities. One of my good friends here, in um, uh, he has a, a, a diversity event. So um, you know, one of my friends here, he books up a local range, okay. And his name is Tony Simon, right? And um, really, really guy, the salt of the earth guy. You know, he believes in freedom, of course. But he's just a really, really nice guy, okay? So Tony Simon has this whole The Second is for Everyone event. And he has it, um, he has it, like, I guess I think he used to have the monthly before COVID and then afterward, I don't know. It kind of slowed down, but I think it might be coming back. And, he, you know, he invites everybody, right? And he, so, you know, and, and he's black, okay? Um, but he, it's for everybody, and we have a pretty, um, you know, we have, we, we, we have a diverse crowd sometimes. And um, I go there, you know, to support the event. And um, we go to the range. We put some stuff down range. And we are, you know, we have a good time. And we share our love for freedom, you know. Yeah, you know. Um, so one of, my, one of my friends who owns a local um, range here, he, he basically says that how he likes teaching women more because they're, um, you know, women are easier to, um, <laughs> Joel Osteen, no, yeah, easier to, um, to teach, but yeah, so, 
<laughs> but anyway, yeah. So our diversity problem, I think, I think, I really think we need to solve this with, um, you know, with, with people, you know, encouraging those who are in the community to say, hey, reach out and, and tell a friend, you know. And, you know, so. But, you know, that, that is what we need to do, I think. You know, and I think it could build it organically. You know, and, and, and long story short, just don't keep ham radio a secret. You know, I tell all my friends about ham radio, right? And, um, you know, people are thankful that I am in this too because I could, you know, I basically, um, I am basically a, a person they could turn to, to, you know, to help them out. So, uh, yeah. So I'll tell you one of the biggest highlights in ham radio is this whole International Space Station and ARIS. That's, that's, a, that's a true thing. Excuse me. I'm actually working on a project with um, a local charter school, tech, uh, Sussex County Charter School for Technology. I didn't start this project. I didn't initiate it. It was in, originally initiated by my friend Vince, KD2TMJ. He doesn't like to take credit, but I give this guy all the credit in the world. He's very enthusiastic, okay? And he's like, and he's like, hey, hey, Rhea, come, come, come over here and tell, tell these kids about ham radio, you know, with a real thick Jersey accent, okay? <laughs> and uh, yeah, but the teacher in that school got licensed. The um, they have a school club now, and they're going to be doing their ISS contact in February or March. It depends on when the time comes, you know. So I'm really happy that we're doing projects like that. The, um, you know, and I mean, that's basically in a nutshell what we do, you know. Now I'll tell you some things that, um, that you know, some, some other thing, parts of the job. Like I, um, every time a club applies for affiliation, so they want to become an AWRL affiliated club, I have to approve that, right, in my division, right. Um, every time there is a ham fest, and the ham fest wants to be sanctioned by the AWRL, I do that. So basically they send it to headquarters and then headquarters will forward it to me and say, do you approve? I look over the application for completeness because I don't just rubber stamp things, right? So I might look and make sure that they have, um, they have uh, you know, proper contact information and such like that. And then we do that. I have the facility to send email to AWRL members so I basically send out an email probably every couple of weeks telling them all the latest news and happenings and such, such like that. And, um, and I keep in regular contact with my members. I'll tell people, uh, anybody who wants to do this, that you have to stay in touch with your members. You cannot, you cannot just sit and, you know, sit in the boardroom. No, 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 no. You have to be hands-on with the members. You have to take emails. You have to take phone calls sometimes. Um, if you're into social media, great, okay? I am a social media zombie, okay? I am on social media all the time. So I love, um, you know, I really love interacting with members. I listen to a lot of things. I get a lot of great ideas from members, okay? A lot of members tell me a lot of good stuff that I take back to the league, right? And sometimes, you know what, even if, if the league can't do something, there are other organizations who can help too. So, you know, I'm not afraid to go outside that box at all. Um, do you also check their financials? Um, I'm not sure what financials. Uh, there is no financial requirement for a club to be affiliated, you know. Um, I have never... I. Um, the last time I went to Barry Electronics was in 2000, the year 2000. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do, I do, I don't do a, a formal newsletter. I do like an email with tidbits. So, you know, I, I break it up into small pieces because I find that if I give people a whole magazine newsletter to read, they're going to get bored, right? They have QST and on the air and they have, um, QEX and NCJ they could read and CQ magazine if they subscribe. But I'm not going to give them, you know, the Hudson Division newsletter 10, 15 pages long. I'm going to give them an email that they could read in 5, 10 minutes, right? Every couple of weeks, okay? This way, they're well apprised of what's happening. Occasionally, I might hold Zoom calls and meetings, right? 
and um, you know, I might, I might just involve people. I will go to Hamfest, you know. Uh, why do I order from AWRL and they send the package offers for other stuff I would order if I would order the thing that I ordered? Well, I mean, you know, it's marketing. They have a whole marketing department and they have like a whole bunch of, um, you know, these flyers and stuff like that, that they just toss one in every box. You want to know something? And this is real funny. <coughs> Excuse me. I order things, right? I, I can order things to give clubs and give away at Hamfest and such like that, right? And I don't, you know, obviously I don't pay for them because they're related to the function. But um, I give these away to clubs and stuff like, such like that as a way to help encourage their Hamfests or whatever, right? Or to add to their learning library. I give away, I give away like a couple AWR handbooks and such like that. Um... Eastern New York is not a division, by the way. Eastern New York is part of my division. I give you a lot of... You have to opt in to the newsletters, okay? Um, yeah, so I order stuff, okay, that, you know, is really intended for other people. And I get these advertising flyers, okay? It's just packed in the warehouse, you know? The, the person, poor person at the warehouse probably has a, 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 a thing that prints out on a computer or a computer screen, and they say, okay, pack this, 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 and this, and this flyer, and boom. Okay? So, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, look, if it, if it bothers you, just throw away the flyer. Okay? Um, but, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, guess first on the air magazine. Yeah, on the air magazine is great, you know. Um, Eastern New York. So, Eastern New York is a section, right? And um, they're actually under the Hudson Division. If you go in the AWRL website and you sign up, um, all right, so Western New York, that's different, okay? So that's under Atlantic Division. That's um, Tom Abernathy, uh, W3TOM. So that's not me. But if it was Eastern New York, you'd be seeing regular letters from me, okay? So I, I basically do that. Let's see here. Um, yeah, so... Uh, no, yeah, so that's, that's, that's a good point. I, I serve completely unpaid. I'm, the, the bylaws prohibit me from receiving any sort of payment, except I get reimbursed for travel, meaning that if I go somewhere, you know, um, they cover my airfare and hotel. If I go on business, so, you know, it's like, whatever. You know, if I, I travel. And, um, yeah, I, I basically, like... Um, and I don't just get to travel everywhere. I get to travel within my specific division. And I also go to Dayton, right, because Dayton's a major convention. And then every few years we have an AWRL National Convention. This year it's going to be in Orlando. Thank God. It's not going to be in somewhere that has ice and snow because I hate ice and snow, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. Hey, Kyle. How's it going? Yeah, so the the calendar, yeah, you know, the calendar is, um, the calendar, I will say hi to Art, Joe. Yeah, Art and I have been working on some stuff, you know, I had a phone call with Art the other day, but um, Art sits, sits right next to me, okay, so I'm in one seat and Art is in the next seat, okay? Yeah, so um, let's see here, yeah. Um, let's see. Any other questions that we have? Um, what message is held for review? Hmm. Mm. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Um, other stuff we would do, I mean, um, oh, by the way, yeah, the part about not being paid to, um, basically, we are also expected to to donate to the league as well to to set an example um i have no problem doing that and i um you know it's kind of carlisle if if it does leak let me know i will um you know send me an email all right n2rj at awrl.org and i will i will take care of that because that's not supposed to happen you know um this new ceo david minster i as he will tell everybody I kind of, um, 
you know, I kind of helped him get into this because I was really looking for a good CEO and something that would be acceptable to my fellow board colleagues and also somebody who loved amateur radio. I um, was approached by David to actually learn how to, to apply and I spoke to him and then he, you know, I told him exactly, you know, look, we're looking for this type of person or do you fit that bill? You know, are you, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, um, yeah, I will, I will definitely be there. I see my phone is flashing, the battery is red, so I might lose it just now. Um, hi, love face XYZ, go away. I'm going to remove you. Okay. Oh my God. Let's see. Hide user. Okay. User's message. Jeez. Put user in time. Right. <laughs> this is a persistent spammer. You know. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I know. It's fun, but this 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 bot or whatever was just going crazy, you know? But I dealt with, with him or her or it, you know? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. So, yeah, we're expected to donate. And some of us are, like, Diamond... Well, I, I do Diamond Club, right? I, I'm a member of Diamond Club, which means I donate um, a minimum amount of money every year. I'm, I donate above that, too. They're... Um, there are members of the board who are uh, Maxim Society, where you donate ten thousand dollars lifetime and above. So Maxim Society, yeah, you know, maybe one day I'll get there. And um, there are some people who would, um, you know, they're they're basically, um, you know, they they're totally they love ham radio, you know. And I find a lot of us, you know, um, actually all of us who serve. We love ham radio in many different ways, okay? There are some people who love emergency communications. There are some people who love contests and DXing. There are some people who love homebrew. There are some people who love, um, you know, VHF, UHF. Like Kermit Carlson, W9XA, who retired, by the way. And the, um, <laughs> yeah, right? It'll be random scripts. And then, um, yeah. Um, you know what? Um, I don't know if the AWRL has done that, but there, there are some things I've actually seen and I, I took issue with in terms of internal marketing surveys and such like that. Um, so who is involved with On The Air? So On The Air is Becky Schoenfeld and, um, she's a managing editor for On The Air and she, um, you know, you can, you can contact Becky, but they have, um, they actually have a dedicated email address for On The Air magazine and I'm sure they would love to if you have something interesting they would love to have it okay um yeah yeah you know and every, everybody finds something interesting these days what am I doing well I'm still doing my HF thing <coughs> excuse me I enjoy teaching people which is why I do this YouTube I enjoy um I enjoy contesting even though I haven't really been doing much lately I want to get back into it you know Hi, Brian. And, um, yeah, so I love also, um, I love DMR, too. You know, I got into DMR a few years ago, and I, I used to enjoy DMR in my commute, you know. And, um, like, no, you definitely don't have to have a big tower. As a matter of fact, you know, a lot of the hams who are involved in AWRL, they might have a radio in their truck or something, you know. Or they might have a... a um, handheld they might operate remote they might you know they might operate a VHF rover you know so yeah you know I mean um, you, you want to basically um, cater to every ham right so all right I think I'm going to wrap this up now um, thank you very much um, this this was a great stream so this week I'm going to be up there from Tuesday until Saturday I might try to do a, a Thursday live stream with Kat. You know, she got her general. She's been really going to town. I mean, she's been, um, you know, she's been uh, 
getting on HF and making contacts and such like that. Really cool stuff. I heard she contacted Kate MRD and Apoda. She contacted me. She contacts. All right, yeah, that was my phone just interrupted me. So, so long, farewell. I'll see you guys in the next one. And to RJ, see you around.